Hi, my name is George, and we're going to be interviewing Data 5000 today. You ready? So how did you get the name Data 5000? Well, believe it or not, my name is Defear Harris, right? But a lot of people couldn't pronounce Defear. They called me Dolphin, Depierre, like I'm French or something like that. So I made it very easy for the world, you know, when I said Dada 5000, you know? So Dada came from the, 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 the shorter version of Da Fear. So I just said Dada, you know? And uh, the 5000 is because I was like always more advanced than my peers, right? So I felt like, you know, I was always on a whole nother level. So uh, the 5,000, we're inside 2018, right? So that's a long way from 5,000. So um, I just felt like I was more advanced. That's how I got the 5,000. So long after I'm dead and gone, people are gonna be talking about me like I was just there. So, so you're in the future? Yo, definitely, so I'm gonna be around forever. So it's been about two years since Kimball passed. And with all respect to his family, if you could say something to Kimball, what would you tell him right now? You know, I would have said that he was right. You know where to run. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. 305, boy. I'm gonna show you. You can't please everybody, Dada. He was like, you can't take everybody with you. Some people just want to be the same. In the initial beginning, I was confused, but he was already on that level. He was already a star. So he was coming, he was, he, he was speaking from a place, you know, that I had no knowledge of. So I got it construed like, oh, you know, this guy could have done this, he could have done that, you know. But I didn't understand that once you get on such a level as that, you know, the individuals that pay you, you are an investment now those sponsors, so you can't come back, you can't hang out, you can't do this because if you was to get jammed, caught up, right, inside of a negative situation, their investment, you know what I'm saying, is blown. So, you know, if I could have talked to him right now, I'd just tell him, hey, listen, you was right about a lot of the stuff that you was speaking about. So definitely be nothing but positive energy and positive vibes. Ah, until we meet again one day, right? Exactly. So Dada, out of all the, the backyard fighters that you had out there, which one really stood out the most to you? Like, which one actually, like you said, damn, this motherfucker is like a badass. I would have to say Tree. And Tree has gotten knocked out, you know, in some ways it's unimaginable. But he has personality, he has character, you know, um, he's just relentless in his approach and in his quest, you know what I'm saying, of, you know, like, never die. You know, I'm gonna do great things. He psychs you out. You know, even though he's passed, you know, he got in there and he, he probably wasn't the most skillful, but psychologically, you know, he was one of the ones <laughs> that definitely got into your head and played mind games with you inside, you know, the uh, the ring. And keeps pushing forward. Exactly, so, you know, this, this is 100% real, but we mixed in a little bit of WWE with some of these guys. Like, um, Tree was my dude, you know, because of what he went through, what he endured, and yet and still, he came back. And he fought one of the best fights of his life in a double header, you know, on National Geographic's hit show, Taboo, where he fought back to back. And he, you know, he knocked the guy out that knocked him out on the documentary. And he fought another guy by the name of Boondock. And Boondock was like 6'3", 240 pounds, mm -hmm. and Tree was like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you know, 160 pounds. And needless to say, you know, when Boondock hit him, he knew he was hit. But again, he didn't back down, he didn't give up, he didn't quit. And that fight ended up going the distance inside of a draw. That was some amazing stuff. I think at that point, Tree earned everybody's respect in the yard. You know, that he had the heart of a lion and it didn't matter how big or how tall or how strong he was, you know, fear is not a factor for him, you know, and um, that was the last fight 
that he did before he actually, you know, uh, died. I think that, you know, with character, with personality being articulate, you know, these guys could definitely go far. And Tree was the first, he wouldn't be the last, but he definitely raised the bar. A lot of these guys with a perfect record, and I'm not gonna name names, but, you know, they're protected in a, in a certain way because they choose and, and avoid certain fights, you know, to protect the record, but I kind of look up to the guy that has a couple of losses, to be honest with you, because he's taking shots, you know what I mean? I have to agree with you there, but you know, it happens everywhere, especially inside the pros. If you're a commodity, your, your name puts butts in chairs, then you're gonna be protected because we can't afford to have you take a loss. Inside the backyard, when we say may the best man win, we really mean that. <laughs> Even though you may be more skillful than your guy, your guy has two hands. And you could get caught with a wild one, you know, and you see everything that you work for flash right before your eyes. But I could safely say this stuff been around since the Roman Colosseum days. The kings and queens used to have, you know, these gladiators duke it out, you know, for the citizens and their enjoyment, sometimes even to the death. You know, so I really feel like, you know, I just revolutionized the way that we look at extreme reality. You know, um, I took something that was, was, was already out and I dressed it up, you know, I made it appealing, you know what I'm saying, and I, um, I put it out there, you know, and it was like going fishing with good bait and we captured the people's mm -hmm. attention, you know, and it just kept growing. Now, you know, they, they want it. It's like, you know, they don't want to be, you know, without it, especially, you know, when they got a whiff of dogfight. We broke records on many, many levels. ESPN E60, National Geographic, Rolling Stones, um, Paul and Young Ron Show, you know, Telemundo, one, two Emmys, Netflix, Vice Media, you name it, man, we did it, EA Sports. So it's like my Q score now in Hollywood is like, almost a 90. So I would say within the next, you know, two months, you know, not uh, people, you know, different countries, different ethnic backgrounds, if they don't know who Dada 5000 is, they definitely would have heard the name Dada 5000. Are you gonna stay living in Parine? Well, you know. That's for, a big one, yeah. that's a big question. Parine will always be home, I mean, travel you know, to different regions and different parts of the world yeah. to spread what it is that I do. But I will always find myself coming back there to uplift the citizens, to uplift the civilians, you know, to keep a positive word in the minds of the kids. Keep the kids you know? out of trouble. Exactly, because I'm the unsung hero, you know, that, that that's actually there and they can reach out and they can touch me. And I always got positive words, positive vibes, and you know, a positive outlook on life. A lot of individuals, they have problems, but they don't have problem solving skills. And a lot of these kids are lacking, you know, guidance and they just gotta burn off some steam and I can see why, how you're playing a big role in their life, you know? In the early years of the UFC, Dana White was uh, encountering a lot of controversy, you know, with the UFC and the direction that it was gonna take. And I remember that it was legal, you know, only in certain states for a while and whatnot. Out here at the barbershop, a lot of the guys, they compare you to the Dana White of backyard fighting. How do you feel about that comparison? Do you see it as something good? Or how do you see it in general? I would definitely look at it, you know, inside of a positive light because he had to, you know, endure and go through one hell of a transition. They didn't have no weight classes. They were bare knuckles, you know, and they were the backyard. So just like they overcame barriers, you know, we're overcoming barriers, you know, the part of evolution that we're going through, you know, is one that, you know, he can definitely identify with. But the difference between me and him, I mean, I'm gonna bring that raw appeal, you know what I'm saying, to professional sports, you know, and when you look at what we're doing, I think that it is it's exciting because there's no additives, preservatives. You know, and I think that this right here is something that the people, you know what I'm saying, want to see. So, you know, we're brawlers, you know, we're sluggers, you know, and we're going to take over, you know, as far as, you know, extreme reality, you know, uh, goes. MMA got boxing on, you know what I'm saying, life support. I think that we're more exciting than MMA. So we're going to put them both inside the same hospital bed, you know, because what we're doing is going to be a fresh breath of air to a dying sport. So they say hindsight is 2020, right? Hindsight, yes. Okay. So when you look back in the world of fighting, what's your highlight? And 
I don't really like talking about regrets, but what would be one of your regrets? I feel like inside the backyard, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't regret anything, bro, because you know everything that I went through, every crook, every shyster, you know what I'm saying, every fighter, you know. It was a learning experience. Exactly. They say time is money. So if I were to have encountered, you know, a BSer on this level, I'm stuck trying to figure this out. So I'm losing money and I'm possibly losing an opportunity. I also would have definitely had better people around me, people that are in my best interest, you know? And I would have had the people around me that want to fan my flame, that want to see me win. Because when I win, the team win. What is team? T-E-A-M, together everyone achieves more, you know? And I've been doing a lot of stuff for a long time by myself. So now it's just about putting the right team together and winning. So that's the regrets and how I'm planning on moving forward. And highlight? What's the highlight? The highlight is, man, being able to talk my way <laughs> on, 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 on national platforms, man, to do what people said that couldn't be done. If I would have told people, you know, 10 years ago that I'm going to do backyard fighting and I'm going to get two of the biggest documentaries ever to come out, I'm gonna, get, crazy. I'm gonna get the front cover of Rolling Stones. I'm gonna go big in National Geographic, ESPN multiple times, Rolling Stones. Right. And they looked at me and said, all right, this dude obviously is crazy. So for little kids out there like, come here, Elias, stand right here, Papa. So for little kids out there, you would tell them anything the mind can conceive, it could achieve, but you gotta put hard work. Of course, if you can see it, you can be it, right? So if you believe and you got the dedication, the motivation, the determination, you can do anything. You know, can't is not a word. The T is silent, right? So you take the T off and you can achieve all things if you believe. See, that's something that a lot of us don't do. You know, we'll let others put their limitations on us. You know, just because they can't do it, you know, they'll say, oh, that can't be done because they can't do it. So you can never let one's opinion of you define your reality. You gotta brush that off. Exactly. Because you can go far. You can go far as you wanna go. You know, you can break records. You know, you can go down in history pages. When you look, as you get older, you're gonna read about a lot of famous people, right? Inside your books. Just know that you can do great things in this lifetime and one day people will be reading about your accomplishments. You know, when you talk about, you know, words, words have power. And sometimes you're gonna be out and about and you're gonna see people and they're gonna seem down, right? Just a friendly smile and a, hey, how you doing? Could definitely turn somebody's day around. Show me your smile. Hey, listen, hey, <laughs> that's a million dollar smile. You know, this dude is gonna be a heartthrob. <laughs> He's gonna be a little lady killer, man. You're gonna be a little lady killer. Hey, listen, I liked you from the first time I seen you. I'm getting out the car and he's like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> My man, I appreciate you, man. The guys at the shop, they keep asking me, is Dada gonna fight again? Definitely, I'm coming back bigger, stronger, better, smarter. You see, because I've been through something. I've been through a life-changing experience, so, you know, I owe it to myself to get back on the horse. I think that it's something that the world is interested in and hate it or love it, you know, the people are gonna watch it. Some people, you know, when they've been hurt as bad as I've been hurt, right? They don't want no parts of getting back inside of a ring, a cage, or none of that stuff. But me, I'm a different dude, you know? So me getting back inside the ring, you know, is something that I dream about every day. You know, I'm strong, I'm healthy, you know, clean bill of health, and I'm coming back, you know what I'm saying, feet first. Three hundred five. We keep it live. Dada five thousand again. Go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. You know these guys, they're doing their thing, man. And I appreciate them for having me out. <laughs>